Adios, your television set. You are fortunate enough to have tuned in to 30 frames a second. Into the fact where the victim is now the perpetrator and the perpetrator is now the victim. Mm -hmm. And that just drives me um, crazy. 10 in the morning, bright and early. We're so grateful that you could join us for a panel on the UN occupation um, of Haiti. And we have different aspects that we will present on that. Myself, my name is Pajani Flurry. I'm a publisher and um, very active in the Haitian community for, for many years. On my right here is Ray Lafroy. I said that in, in my best <laughs> Creole Haitian um, accent. Yes. And um, Kim Ives as well is um, presenting on this very important topic. As a publisher and a community organizer, I found a way to reach the masses on many different levels. And so, um, I have three publications, one of which does deal with Haiti, it's called Keskia Magazine. So we do a lot of culture and arts bringing in uh, the, the masses, right? We, we have these type of forums here, but of course, not everyone can fit into to these small classrooms and be with us. So we always make sure that we have different um, ways of, of reaching people. So on my left here is my husband, stage name Ari, his name is Joshua. And it is a name that he chose under our, our way of life, our belief system. Um, we are Hebrew Israelites, and we take our message to different parts of um, the, the community and the world. So he's going to do a piece for you today. Um, it's entitled Mocha, and it speaks to what I'm going to be um, specifically presenting on, which is the prostitution that happened under um, the UN occupation, the Munista um, mission of Haiti. There has been a lot of um, reports, kind of rumors, and now as the 63rd session of um, the UN General Assembly, there has been concrete information provided about um, UN peacekeepers' involvement with prostitution in Haiti. So with that, I'm going to leave it up to Ari <laughs> to provide a musical piece um, in reference to the, the problem of pro prostitution and sex trafficking that goes on globally. This goes out to the young, beautiful black girls, the ones who are trying to make it in this cool world. So she get her shorts cut short, tight mini skirts and drop curls. Tall or short, stay in the gym so she gets no rolls. Don't want to walk so she recline and roll. Don't mess with dudes unless they money in rolls. And every weekend she on that dance floor, she's getting low. Sex is unprotected, continuing the cycle, now she's pregnant with that baby girl. She still got them drop curls, but now she got slow self-esteem. So she roll up in steam, drink mad liquor. Swinging on poles, her stage name Mocha. Scared to come up short, she thinking those pimps gon' shoot her. Tell me, have y'all seen her? They all around this globe, permafro. It's hard for these young black girls to grow in a system that want them to be hoes. So they mimic these video hoes only if they know they worth Young mothers, sisters, and daughters, do you know your worth? Woman, carry the seed for nine months and then give birth. Beautiful black woman, please know your worth. However, these are things that women in, in Haiti are experiencing. You know, here, the, the problem is um, not as, let's just use the word outrageous, right? Because we have a, a judicial system and a lot of people pay for those crimes. But in Haiti, the, and especially the UN peacekeepers, are protected under that cloak. There are many men um, and women in position of power who exploit women and girls, and, and particularly in vulnerable situations such as Haiti, where food and resources are hard to come by. There's lack of jobs, lack of you know, proper infrastructure. So when you're dealing with a vulnerable community like that and an institution comes in that's supposed to protect and serve, this is one of the biggest crimes against humanity that a, a population can face. Because if the women that are the nurturers of a country, of a nation, and the children who are the future 
are not protected and they're being exploited, the, the, the country doesn't stand a chance. The women are the nurturers, and, and as I already said, the womb is so important. And if the government and the people in power are not focused on protecting the womb of their country, it is, it is, it is setting up a, a, a generations to come for failure. And the government, the recent government, I feel failed the next, you know, even 100 generations because these, these women and girls that came up to speak about the, the, what they've experienced um, under the, the UN peacekeepers' exploitation, many of them experienced the exploitation as young as nine years old. They, didn't, they, they were not fully developed, you know, developed at all. And the, the UN peacekeepers had a, a big hand in the rise in prostitution. This is, this is documented at the 63rd General Assembly. Um, you can research it, you can pull up the information. Um, all these things are, are held in the database of um, the UN. You can go online and search for the 63rd session of the General Assembly at the UN. And Haiti presented on the, the rise of prostitution from the time Haiti was occupied by UN peacekeepers. And they have been brought up on charges. However, none of them have, have been prosecuted. None of the UN peacekeepers. Um, and, and they've been called by name. They have been outed. Uh, many of them came from, from India, Nepal, um, and Brazil. And, and Brazil has a big problem now because their whole reason for sending so many troops to, to um, be a part of this UN mission was to secure themselves a position on the UN Security Council. They want to seem strong on you know, national security and, and addressing humanitarian issues around the world. So they thought this was the perfect project. However, many of these Brazilian troops have been called out by name for running prostitution rings in Haiti. So when you look at um, how far back reports of prostitution and sex exploitation, sex trafficking in relation to UN peacekeepers, so many things that could have been done. Because the first reports came out in 1999. In August 1999, it was presented in the UN um, in relation to Mozambique. So this problem um, is not just in Haiti. Um, it's, it's not just um, because of, of Haiti's lack of infrastructure um, and many other issues that um, where it, it's, it's an isolated problem. This is a UN problem. This is a this is a problem of them recruiting pedophiles and people who 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 did come from shady backgrounds that are recruited into these missions to quote unquote serve and protect. And they're not doing that at all. They are a part of the global system to exploit people who are vulnerable. And the, the government of Haiti, although they did present um, this information, concrete information, research had been done, um, proving all of the, these crimes of exploitation that happened. And not one person has been prosecuted or served time in jail. None of these individuals pay for these crimes. And I would like to see more done um, by the Haitian government to, to hold foreign entities accountable that come into the country and do more harm than good. And also for the global community to, to do more to protect women and girls. Myself, I'm Kim Ives. I'm one of the uh, editors and writers at Haiti Liberté newspaper, the largest Haitian weekly. And um, uh, we have on the cover this week, La classe ouvrière résiste, exige mais négocie. There's now a workers' uprising in Haiti, which uh, Ray will uh, talk about shortly. Uh, but this is really the result of, I could say, a two-decade war against the Haitian people uh, carried out by the U.S. Empire. Some decades ago, 
shortly um, after the U.S. first U.S. occupation of Haiti from 1915 to 1934 under the uh, doctrine of the good neighbor policy put in place by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. There was a model set in place where essentially U.S. troops would go in to a country, set up the army, and then leave the local army as a proxy. This was the scenario we saw in Haiti where they set up the guard d'Haiti. Uh, it was the same in Nicaragua, in the Dominican Republic, and uh, Guatemala, other Cuba. countries, Cuba, where essentially the armies became the defenders of the neo-colonial power. Um, and the dictators uh, who ran the armies were sons of bitches, but as FDR said of uh, Somoza, he's the son of a bitch, but he's our son of a bitch. So this uh, worked for a few decades but the problem was it created many revolutions, many Che Guevara's. They started to have revolutions everywhere. And this is where the empire, uh, which is always analyzing these problems, uh, came with a new paradigm. And that paradigm was the international peacekeeping force. This is, we will use uh, people of the same a world, the third world, uh, to police themselves, much the same, same way we see the brownification of the U.S. police forces, uh, especially after events like the Abner Luima torture or the Patrick Dorisma killing uh, about a, a decade and a half ago here in New York, uh, where many more uh, black police officers were recruited in. Um, so now, instead of having U.S. Marines do the policing and the, the monitoring of these nations with proxy forces, they use Brazilians or Sri Lankans or Pakistanis or Argentinians. And um, uh, I have a number of differences with Noam Chomsky, um, who I traveled next next month will be 24 years ago to Haiti with, and we had a long talk going down on the plane about um, the UN. And he said, the UN has always been a simple arm of US policy. He said, from the Korean War on, it has always been uh, this role, and it's never been different. And to delude ourselves that it is um, a, uh, uh, s some sort of international neutral body is, is a big mistake. And um, while I'm on that, before I even go to the next point, I'm going to make a plug for a book that I think you should all try to find, if you can. It's called The Great Haiti Humanitarian Aid Swindle. And this is done by a statistical anthropologist by the name of Tim Schwartz, Timothy Schwartz. Uh, this is a numbers guy who uh, doesn't have any particular ideological dog in the fight, but he does give primacy to numbers. He came to some sort of uh, renown when uh, about two years after the earthquake, he said it wasn't 312 people who died in the earthquake. It was between, uh, yeah, 312,000 people who died in the earthquake. It was between 44 and 66,000. And he did this through uh, statistical methodology, which he laid out. But showing that the 312,000 number that had been put out there was completely picked out of thin air. In any case, he's written a, a, a wonderful book which explodes so many of the myths about Haiti in terms of its criminality, in terms of its um, uh, uh, violence, et cetera, uh, which people who have worked or lived in Haiti 
no, uh, can be blown completely out of proportion by the mainstream press. But one of his uh, particular targets in a chapter that I just finished, and I haven't finished the book, but it's uh, excellent reading, a real page turner, is about that hallowed, sacrosanct agency of the UN known as UNICEF. I mean, who, who, who could have an issue with UNICEF? We all collected trick-or-treating, the little UNICEF boxes when we would uh, go around on Halloween, uh, at least I did years ago. And, um, but UNICEF, for one, is one of the huge beneficiaries of this UN occupation of Haiti. Uh, they are the agency which uh, had contributed in large measure to what was supposedly the orphan crisis after the earthquake. They claimed uh, that there were as many as one million orphans after the earthquake, which was a, 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 an absurd number uh, when there were uh, perhaps no more than 100 uh, according to his uh, statistical breakdown and investigation into the matter. But they came up with the notion of uh, orphans as being any child who had lost one parent. So you might have another parent, but if you just have one parent, um, you can be dubbed an orphan. And hence, you have this whole orphanage industry. And it, it's a very fascinating story that he uh, puts in the book about uh, the struggle that grew between Save the Children and UNICEF on the one hand versus the evangelical uh, um, orphanages which uh, came to be set up uh, as uh, some sort of um, uh, uh, fishing ground looking for children which could then be given to evangelical parents in the state and raised as good Christians, et cetera, et cetera. Um, fascinating, but also looking at it in Haitian culture, how in fact many poor families want their child to be adopted to be able to go to the states and send money back, et cetera. In any case, that's just a, a slight detour to, as we uh, talk about the UN uh, role in Haiti. So uh, this new paradigm changed and the international peacekeeping force has now become the new way to uh, uh, monitor the neo-colonies. And uh, the first step is to get rid of the dictators as was done about 30 years ago. Uh, Duvalier, Somoza, uh, Marcos in the Philippines, uh, Pinochet, etc. They were shown the door and we brought in what Edward Herman called um, through demonstration elections these civilian heads of state who were elected the same way they're elected here, the candidate with the most money wins usually, uh, and uh, they would be backed by this international peacekeeping force if there uh, was trouble that came up uh, in the course of uh, their time in power. Now, in Haiti, uh, this happened fairly quickly because they, are, they elected the wrong president. Uh, they were supposed to, in 1990, elect a World Bank um, uh, functionary, Marc Bazin, who uh, was uh, well-funded through the National Endowment for Democracy. He had a war chest of about 36 million. And uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, a poor parish priest, came up against him. He had a war chest of about $500,000, so that's a differential of about 72 to 1. But uh, out of a field of 16 candidates, uh, uh, Aristide won handily with uh, 67 percent of the vote when they stopped counting because it probably would have been more. Uh, he uh, was not what Washington had wanted and the government of uh, George H.W. Bush um, worked behind the scenes with um, the Haitian elite uh, which uh, has a sort of a comprador bourgeois element and a big landowning element and they 
brought about a coup d'etat. And uh, that coup d'etat continued for three years. The resistance went unabated, and it in fact grew because it was a very stark example of a popularly elected government overthrown by these military dictators. Uh, it was very bloody. And eventually, uh, Bill Clinton had come into power by 1992. He was elected. And it was clear the problem wasn't going away. So he said, OK, we're going to try something new. And they brought Aristide back on the shoulder of uh, 20,000 US troops. But those troops only stayed there uh, until March of 1995. And that was when the first uh, UN, uh, when I say stayed there, they militarily occupied the country. Uh, and they stayed there until the UN peacekeepers, quote unquote, took over in 1995. Now, um, with any military occupation, and this has been true since the time of the Romans, you are going to have terrible crimes. Uh, prostitution is one, uh, child, uh, you know, fatherless children uh, are, are left in many towns and cities where you know, uh, uh, thousands of young men of various uh, nationalities uh, couple up with uh, Haitian women and leave the kids behind having promised whatever they promised. And um, that's just the beginning, okay, because there are massacres, there are rapes, there are uh, 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 many other uh, crimes of power which are committed by these uh, troops. Uh, and by 2000, that first UN occupation had been phased out, and Aristide was again elected in 2000. Unfortunately for him, that was also the year George W. Bush came to power, and they had it out for him. Uh, they had three targets, Haiti, Venezuela, and Cuba. And uh, as uh, the uh, uh, Noriega, who was the uh, Secretary of State for the Western Hemisphere, said, uh, Haiti was the low-hanging fruit. It, that was the easy one. Venezuela was a little harder, and uh, Cuba was the tough nut. Uh, well, we know that the Venezuelan coup did not succeed. It was turned back by the people in alliance with the army. But in Haiti, they did succeed in ousting Aristide for a second time in 2004. Um, and uh, he um, was whisked out of the country, taken to Africa. Uh, briefly, he was in Jamaica. He spent uh, seven years in exile in Africa. Uh, but in, during that time, a UN peacekeeping force in June 2004 was brought into Haiti to uh, take over from the American, the US, French, and Canadian forces, which occupied the country from March 1st 2004 until June 1st, 2004. And this UN occupation was supposed to last for six months. Six months was what they were talking. But it is now still ongoing today in 2017, 13 years later. Now, the uh, reason for the title of this uh, uh, particular workshop, The Shell Game, is that they've uh, once again uh, uh, through uh, compliant media and through very little critical thinking, as uh, again Tim Schwartz points out in all the myths uh, perpetrated about Haiti, have convinced people that the occupation is over. But it is not over. The occupation ha has been made, uh, the military occupation of Haiti, which by the way is the only country in the Western Hemisphere to uh, endure a uh, foreign military occupation. Uh, most of the others are in Africa and Asia. Uh, the occupation has had upwards of uh, 11 to 12,000 members that during the um, uh, earthquake. Uh, it is now at about 3,000 and drawing down. And in, by October, it is supposed to be 
finished, what is called the UN mission to stabilize Haiti, MINUSTA. That is the force that came in in 2004. But uh, this force is made up not just of soldiers, but of police officers as well, men and women who carry guns, who are foreign uh, uh, troops, essentially. And the Haitian constitution is extremely explicit about this matter. It says there can be no armed force in Haiti other than the police and the Haitian army. Uh, there can be no other armed force on Haitian territory. So it's a flagrant violation of the Haitian constitution. And furthermore, it is a violation of chapter seven of the UN charter, which states specifically that Troops are to be used in cases of international conflict, not for domestic internal affairs. And this is what has happened in Haiti. Uh, they have essentially inserted troops in to handle uh, an internal conflict. Now, this has great importance because Haiti is often uh, the, the test case, just as during that first occupation in, from 1915 to 1934, they pioneered techniques like aerial bombings. That was when the airplane was beginning to be used as a weapon, uh, strategic hamlets, uh, uh, many things we saw in Vietnam. Uh, we now see, uh, Ray and I just last night were at an emergency meeting that the Venezuelan amba ambassador here to the UN called. Uh, up at the Venezuelan embassy because there is a coup d'etat underway, as I'm sure all of you know, in Venezuela. And uh, he explained to us that at the, in the UN, they are trying to bring before the Security Council the uh, case of Venezuela to say we need to bring in troops, we need foreign intervention, the situation is out of hand, the people are starving, it's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And again, the precedent that they're using for this is Haiti. Uh, he's explained that they've been able, with their allies, to beat back these attempts. But the OAS is another matter. The OAS, which Cuba calls Washington's Ministry for Colonial Affairs, uh, the uh, Secretary General of it, Luis Amalgro, has made the Venezuelan crisis his uh, 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 whipping boy, he has uh, constantly been out uh, trying to bring sessions of the OAS at, to the point where Venezuela has now had to withdraw from the OAS because of his flagrant uh, um, uh, inter uh, meddling uh, on the behalf of Washington. So um, this is where uh, just to return now to the MINUSTA question, MINUSTA has supposedly been trumpeted to be withdrawing its troops on October 15th this year, and that will be the end of the occupation. But it is being replaced by another mission called the MINUJUST, the, Min the UN Mission for Justice in Haiti. And this is made up of 1,300, uh, of almost 1,400 police officers, which are, in essence, the same uh, force. But it is the thin edge of the wedge. But the fact that they can keep these foreign officers in there, and what is their mission? In an April 14th uh, uh, session at the UN, or maybe it was April 11th, the um, uh, just shortly before the uh, last six-month renewal on April 15th, uh, the uh, head of MINUSTA said their mission of MINUJUST will be to supervise and monitor governance and elections in Haiti. That is, they are going to be the umpires, the, uh, the overseers of Haitian democracy, quote-unquote. Uh, uh, these the same nation which has the uh, uh, well-known uh, anomaly of the electoral college. Uh, we don't have direct democracy in this country as we know. We have an electoral college. And in fact, um, this was 
uh, a point I brought up with Orlando Marville in a Voice of America interview back in uh, 2004 when they were criticizing Haitian elections and they used that very argument of the election calculation was not correct and therefore the OAS needs to intervene. And I said, well, then the OAS should be intervening in the U.S. because you have an electoral college and many people don't agree with the results that gives. So, um, so here is the dilemma. We have a press which is uncritically uh, repeating the fallacy that the UN occupation of Haiti is over when in fact we have still over 1,000 UN troops in the form of police officers still going to be stationed in Haiti indefinitely after October 15th. So um, I think we can talk more afterwards. I want to leave time for uh, Ray to talk about the uh, uprisings uh, that are happening in Haiti, which is the very reason why those UN troops are there. Um, but uh, we do have to understand that uh, Haiti is once again being used as a, 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 a sort of a, a template for the type of domination that the empire wants to bring to the entire hemisphere. We, uh, as, as Kim mentioned, um, particularly as the Second World War was approaching, the U.S., uh, I guess, so to some extent, needed the troops to be fighting Germany and, and Italian fascism. Uh, also, it was an experimentation with a, a new stable reality. So, as, as he was saying, people like Batista, or uh, Castro was kind of half tolerated a little bit, uh, thinking they could control him, and uh, dictatorship that we saw all over the place, as in Brazil, Argentina, those gorillas, as you call them, uh, Tujillo was actually assassinated. And um, so they were trying a new formula. And that formula was uh, the magic tool of election, which works very well for us here. And um, so what it does, it gives people the illusion. People commit all their resources, their energies, into a process that eventually f is set up to fail. It's set up to deny them willpower. And, uh, and, um, and therefore accept the result. And also in the process, uh, people get compensated, uh, become, uh, like in the case of Haiti, people become professional politicians. And that's a source of income for them, their friends, and their family. Uh, and, and then, of course, there's corruption of, uh, within that. Um, so we saw the strong hand of, uh, of, of US military president, dictatorship imposing American ways, and this was way before, by the way, Haiti was invaded in 1915. That was before the Russian Revolution. And um, was it? Well, yes. For the Haitian <laughs> Revolution. Oh, the Russian I mean, yes, the Russian Revolution, the yes. Russian, yes. Um, so we, they, that excuse could have been used at that particular point. So they created what they call, you know, very unfairly, Banana Republic, which doesn't define who those people are, but what you have reduced them to be which is just a, first, as a practical effect of having people producing things for you just for your own conception, that your own company is benefit and control uh, uh, directly, economically, uh, control salar salaries, and indirectly create forces that affect and control the political reality there, work hand in hand with the military. Um, so, but this blood instrument, as Kim explained, resulted in uh, uh, Tremendous upheaval, you know, 1954, Urbans uh, became takes power in in, in Guatemala uh, and gets killed finally, overthrown and killed when he finally decides that the oil of Guatemala, which is the primary resources, should actually belong to the people and government of uh, of Guatemala. It's like somebody says, you know, it's not our oil, and then it's those people's land somehow. Um, so, so the, the system then is, is withdrawn with a figurehead, so-called more democratic, the electoral process being used. But again, uh, this is, a, this is a, 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 an, an altered version of what is essentially an exploitative system. And since you cannot actually uh, have slavery and actually make the slave happy about the situation, 
uh, the system by nature is unstable. So um, then we start seeing, in spite of uh, what happened to our bands, this process continues. We have revolt in Venezuela, um, uprising. Castro happens, of course, in Cuba. And, um, and then we have the first attempt being Kennedy's Alliance for Progress, which is a fig leaf, you know, not only that, it's a band-aid on, on a real uh, gaping wound. And also, um, both the Cuban example and, and, and relentless organizing in toward those countries result in, uh, uh, in creation of movements that later give you the, 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 the Nicaraguan Revolution, El Salvador's FMLN. Um, so the monster from the US perspective reappears, and they have to find a way to deal with it. And, um, the way that we see it was in the Reagan, pretty much was brute force. You know, we had the Contras uh, assassinating the people of, of, of Nicaragua. Uh, in El Salvador, the U.S. used uh, this, uh, a weapon called in Vietnam the Puff, the Magic Dragon. Uh, so named because it is, uh, you know, those, those new Gatling guns that can pepper a, a, a football field. You know, we see seen every six inches of each other, there will be a bullet set up. Weapons like that were used in essentially an agrarian society. Um, sometimes bombs were being dropped on their, on their camp, and they, they couldn't even see the plane. Uh, sometimes maybe there were B-52s. This is a, a level of technology that was used to destroy and, and roll back those, those movements for not just resistance, but active change. At that point, um, Haiti was still dealing with the... Um, the end, you know, the new version of uh, Duvalier's dictatorship, and they saw something. Duvalier died that gave them an opening. Um, um, two branches that uh, of the Haitian upper class that came defined, uh, you know, one of the comprador, which tends to be mostly the the, the heir to uh, the mulatto class that that took over after the revolution, and uh, some of the uh, people the uh, quote unquote blacks in Haiti were generals who became huge landowners and created, and those people were fighting supposedly over skin color, and, uh, but both sides were actually screwing the Haitian people the best way they could. So uh, with Baba Doc died, dead, and the Baby Doc throwing his eyes on some, uh, some women uh, from the traditional bourgeoisie, the US saw a unique opportunity of bringing those two groups together. And it worked to some extent, uh, so that the business of exploiting the Haitian people and sucking his blood, as they done uh, sometimes literally, uh, particularly in the Papa Doc, uh, was, uh, I saw a, a, a cartoonish thing the other day. There was a famous guy, infamous guy named Cambron in Haiti, and his, his business was actually people who, uh, who had not even eaten for five, six, ten days would come and give their blood. And so that that blood would have been properly tested, would be the serum would be taken and shipped all over the place, including this country. A kind of a Dracula, uh, 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 ghoulish aspect to this. Um, so, um, so, so now, the, so that the 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 uh, the, the brute the British uh, militaristic thing approach that Duvalier had is somewhat is being withdrawn. Uh, the army is still there. The baby dog creates something called the, 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 the uh, what was that group again? I forget its name. The now. leopards. The leopards. <laughs> Just completely an over, you know, uh, misnomer. <laughs> Nothing really scary. But anyway, they were armed, and the Asian people were not. And um, but this is the system is still too much of what it is. I mean, you cannot. Uh, overnight change because the motivation of people taking part in that system, first, these are the same elements, it is the motivations are the same. It's just that the leopard, <laughs> speaking of that, is trying to change the spots of that leopard. And um, so eventually, um, uh, so uh, at the end of Papa Doc, well, not, not quite the end, uh, the left was physically eliminated, particularly in 1969. And there was a vacuum created within which elements were somewhat protected by the Church of Rome, of which Aristide was part of, the so-called uh, theology of liberation, were able to expand and were presented 
and express the desires of Haitian masses for a modicum of social justice and an end to violence and corruption. Um, so the result was that was Harris. So Harris was a spoiler. Uh, because the election was finally was going to give you all the illusion that, again, as someone said, you participated in this, you can involve all your time. It took two years, you know, during an election, like they do to us here, you know. And then you do nothing else but that. You attack somebody who's against whom you really have no particular uh, disagreement, you know, fundamental disagreement. And, uh, and eventually somebody wins and uh, everybody lines up and um, either suffers the consequences or try to get the most out of it by being part of the system. And uh, so IEC was a spoiler. But when it became clear that uh, even though basically it was a relatively modest program when you consider, for example, what was happening in Nicaragua or in El Salvador, uh, that was the beginning of, of changes. And that was not accepted. One of the changes they would not accept was their IEC desire to increase uh, uh, minimum salary, which neither the upper class was willing to pay. Uh, and, um, and make other changes that went against the tradition of militaristic control that the Juvalis had left behind. So, and uh, clearly was a bad example that could not be allowed to apparently succeed. So all those forces, including the United States, got together, and as Kim said, put, in, put an end to that experiment in a bloody way. Unfortunately, those that replaced them, uh, as, as I say sometimes, could not do anything indifferent except to kill and steal. And eventually, after I said accepted to apparently make some compromise, and um, particularly economically, and uh, focusing particularly on privatization, which was the boogie thing in those days that was going to be the situation, uh, the solution to those countries. In Haiti, and like even more than many other countries in the area, the state is the largest employer, was and still is. And uh, so the idea is that you would just give people the freedom to participate in an economic development and take over their own destiny and buy, like we do here, like, buy our own, own health plan, you know, and decide our own, make our own decision as to what plan we want to have. And um, so, but I did not comply, you know, sufficiently, and um, partially because the Haitian masses were not willing to go that way. And uh, uh, my own view of him is that he got caught in the middle by uh, accepting to make enough change so that the U.S. took him back, but making too many changes, or at least did not make enough clear pronouncement so that the very forces that had resisted and had put him in power were kind of completely confused and disorganized so that he was overthrown one more time. And at this point, they made sure they sat on it. The difference between the first coup against Aristide and the second one is that the first one happened after seven months. And they just were not going to accept that bullshit. And they were going to put things straight. But when they realized the support that was behind those changes that Aristide was, was pushing, they decided, well, what we'll do that, will that Aristide ride? We'll deny him access to any resources. They were denying access. I remember there was like a 500 million uh, loan that was, uh, I think, in the Pan American Bank. And that the U.S. vetoed Inter-American Development in, Bank. Okay, sorry. One hundred fifty-eight million. Yeah. Yeah. And Haiti had to pay literally millions of dollars so that they could keep the loan alive, and it never worked. Actually, it never worked. And um, so eventually, I it was demonized enough. That's one of the tools we know they have in in the possession, which is the control of a major propaganda machine, and 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 of course the power of money, and. Um, so he was removed. So this time they took the time a little bit longer, and they set up the machinery of, uh, of, um, of electoral process. And at the end, two people were uh, uh, ready to take that mantle, and either one would have served pretty much uh, the US interest. The indelibit that actually made it to power, um, Michel Martelly, sweet Mickey, a musician, was a more reactionary in a way, more connected to the Duvaliers. Uh, Neo Givaldewis group. And, uh, but again, what succeeded was uh, complete corruption uh, with a tremendous assistance from Venezuela. In, as people may know, historically, when Bolivar was fighting for change within Latin America, um, even before that, Miranda, uh, they were defeated by Spanish, the Spaniards. The only country where any human being was accepted, except a slave owner, was Haiti, literally, in the world was Haiti. So Miranda went to Haiti when Dessalines was the emperor, 
and um, got some assistance, went back, was defeated. Some 10 to 15 years later, Bolivar took over and uh, similarly was defeated. Went to Haiti again. Actually, the, the, the Venezuelan flag was created uh, in the southern city of Jacques Mel, flown there for the first time. And if you look at the three countries created by Bolivar, which are Venezuela, um, Ecuador, and Colombia, they all have blue and red of the Haitian colors. And um, so Bolivar was given weapons, uh, treating press, troops. About 100 volunteers who actually died, because uh, they're, they're the ones who experienced, they actually died uh, uh, in the fight, most of them. And, uh, and Bolivar was able to succeed. So because of that death, uh, um, for example, Haiti was one country that received completely free uh, assistance from Venezuela. And in some of the cases, Venezuela allied with, with Cuba in terms of delivering uh, some of the medical care, taking Haitians to, to Venezuela, uh, so they could have eye tests and so on for free. And, and unfortunately, uh, the dilemma they had is that um, most of that money was completely pillaged and stolen. So the U.S. is still having problem getting people to execute their plan. People will be disciplined enough. Because the, the, the tradition of, 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 of plutocracy and, and, and violence in Haiti is so strong. A tradition that they have encouraged when it benefited, benefited them, by the way. Because for 29 years, they accepted the Duvaliers. Because Cuba was 55 miles away, and they would not have that. So I remember as a kid a, a time when uh, some modicum of democracy was actually real, and somebody like Magloire, although it was a farce in terms of ultimate power, empowerment, and delivering the resources of the country to the needs of the people. So Duvalier was the one that completely took the mask off, and then raping and, and stealing and disappearing people became everyday accountants where it was not surprising. If somebody got arrested and disappeared, you were actually lucky. That becomes a new definition of what's right and wrong. So, now throughout all this is a completely pauperization of the Haitian masses. I mean, situations that are just incredible, incredible to believe the situation of, of depravity in this country and the, 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 the lack of basic services, uh, uh, low life expectancy that exists in that Asian population. I like to think and say that if you really want to see the face of imperialism, Haiti is one of the places that you have to see. You have to see what those people are willing to, to tolerate and even impose so that they can have their way. An incredible suffering on millions of people. At this point right now, the majority of Haitians go hungry every day. Uh, and it goes all the way to starvation or near starvation. Now, these are, you could argue, uh, somewhat revolutionary situation where people could re re revolt. And, um, and the skill that they have developed is to keep it constantly out of balance so that this has happened, keep groups uh, create yellow unions, create groups out of nowhere, use violence. And again, unfortunately, the, the illusion of election is still working. Those populist Kenji that come out and promise uh, everything in the world that don't work. Um, so unfortunately, to that extent, we have regressed, if you want, that uh, there's a, the awareness and the, 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 the ability of people to uh, join together and, 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 and resist the way we saw appear in the United States. I've, I've received a serious setback, uh, but clearly the potential for going back there and more exists because first it has been done already. And um, so what remains to, to happen in a way is for, for the majority of the masses to be clear that this, none of this is, is working, none of this is meant to work and that the solutions have to be more radical solutions, where they have to be involved in taking their own decision in their own hands. So as a result, I mean, I've met, I've seen some of you before, and every time we meet one here and other places, there's a, a, a tale of whole woes and, 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 and suffering and abuse. And you wonder, you know, bastaya, as they say in Spanish, you know, when do we say enough? When, do, when, when does it stop? Part of the reason you start stopping is the amazing military and, and other uh, soft power of the United States, clearly. Otherwise, this would have been resolved, taken care of already with the nation contract. 
so, but the contradictions are enough now. And uh, as Kim was saying, one of the uh, negative, another negative aspect of the presence of the United Nations and all the foreign uh, uh, individuals who work for different international organizations and the, uh, the aid, the so-called uh, uh, NGOs, is that these people get paid on a different scale than the majority of the Haitian population. Some of those people get paid as much as the Haitian president. So those people have cars, gasoline, rent provided to them. So what they have, one of the consequences of residence, besides the political aspect, is that practically they have raised the standard of living, the cost of living, to such a level that most Haitians completely are left out. So that inflation now is such on such a level that most Haitians cannot survive. Even people on the level of the uh, middle class, you could say, let's say would have a house, have a second house, and rent it. Now, if a, a, a blanc, as we say, uh, which literally means white, but it means foreigner in Haiti, if a blanc is willing to pay twice as much for the house, so the Haitian that used to rent that house is out of luck. So this has impact throughout the whole society. And, um, and but again, as I said, the system is not sustainable. Whatever resources, they're not able to, to create the, what's lacking is the enthusiasm, the participation of the Haitian masses in, in creating a workable system. So therefore, the system is being made thin from the outside to a great extent. There's a tremendous amount of corruption among the business classes. And, uh, and now we're coming to crunch again very quickly. And military force cannot just stop it. So as, uh, as resources become uh, less and less available, what they've done recently, partially because Venezuela has its own, its own difficulties and has cut down the assistance they were giving. One of the most essential things in Haitian life is the price of gasoline. It affects everything. Be able to take your car, all the taxes, cooking oil, cooking gas, and everything like that. The government has raised that. And, um, and the salary is already so low that at this point, people are starting to organize. Students are going to the streets and refusing, as, as young as junior high school, refusing to go to class because the teachers have not been paid for so long that the teachers do not work anymore. Um, right now, the, the, the nexus of the, 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 the demonstrations and anger, if you want, is among assembly workers who have now facing uh, again, uh, maybe we can talk about that later. People who make low enough salaries that they barely can. It sounds like we, we were talking about, about something like 15 years ago, you know, it's repeating itself. Uh, that what they make is just enough for them to have a little sandwich and then uh, and, and take a, a tap tap to go to work. And then they work outrageous hours and, and, and then by the time they get home, it's a survival, barely. And, uh, and now they, they, those people are demanding that the salary be raised to 800, from 200 and something to 800 uh, good, which is equivalent of about $11 a day, by the way. That's what they're fighting for. And at this point, uh, it is about a third of that. So we can talk a little bit more about that. And uh, so this is the, the other aspect of the Midustan and the system, the propping, is that the Asian people seem to be moving again. They traded in their white hoodies for blue uniforms, blood hungs for canines, quick to shoot an unarmed black man and then claim that he reached for his knives. He didn't go home on paid leave, leaving mothers in grief. We didn't unite deep in these streets using guerrilla warfare. A million blacks united with no fear. That's exactly what white America fear. I feel it in the air. They're sending troops, martial law, they aim and shoot. It's all our war. The revolution will be televised. Donald Trump, Hillary, they both tell the lies. US and ISIS is all ties. My mom ain't raised no fool, I grow wise. They say the windows to a man's soul is his eyes. So take a look into my windows and you will see my pain. I'm tired of witnessing my people get slain. So like coal in, I ain't taking no stand for no national anthem. I'd rather take a stand on equal rights, justice, and freedom. I'd rather take a stand on protecting our women and children. They enforce their Jim Crow laws, segregation, discrimination, assassination. Leaders, we need to unite this nation with no hesitation. Lyrically, I'm on a mission to change the situation we face in police and stay racial profiling. I do medical evaluations of people who are in immigration detention um, at the request of lawyers. And it seems there was a cohort of Haitians who were working in Brazil, primarily around the World Games and the Olympics, and were making good money and sending it home. 
and then sort of as that economy has deteriorated, they, knowing about the temporary protected status, took planes, arrived in Mexico City, crossed the border, um, and in groups, um, thinking that they were going to find work, and basically ended up in immigration detention, um, and then got scattered all over the country. Although we have we had a group of probably 10 to 20 that were here incarcerated um, in local jails. Uh, and it's really a horrible situation for them. There they are detained. They've committed no crime. Um, they're, they're not criminals, but they're detained in local jails. And it's very difficult to get out. We had someone who we thought the judge would get, allow them to leave, but they required a $5,000 bail. Um, which the family was unable to come up with, which means that now the U.S. taxpayers are paying to keep that person in a local county jail essentially indefinitely, I guess. And these are in jail where? In the Bronx? Uh, no, these are mainly Hudson County, the Hudson County Correctional Facility, which is in Kearney, New Jersey, the Essex County um, Correctional Facility, uh, Orange County, and Bergen County. So these are all local jail facilities. And it's really a terrible situation because they don't speak French. I mean, they don't speak English. And none of the people that they're dealing with speak anything other than English. Um, it's just truly any way you treat them. Um, I mean, was in a similar situation in a SS County, County Correctional uh, Facility. They helped me to have seven months, $5,000 bail. And by the grace of God. The driver with no license. We, we were able to get his bail reduced. You know, we had a, a very good judge that we can we can say Judge Finston um, reduced the bail, and we were able to make um, bail, he cut right. it in half, we cut it you know twenty five hundred. But I interact with some of those Haitians. I was in there with them. A lot of them are trying to get asylum, saying that if they go back to their country, they will have to face um, a lot of different things like. Um, incarceration, mandatory incarceration, if they don't have families to, to sign out to. They, they were afraid that they would have to stay in prison. A lot of them saying that they died because of the conditions and things like that. It's, but they wasn't giving them any asylum. After the earthquake, I heard it was like right after the earthquake, they was giving asylum. But I was there like in 2015, 2014, 2015. Yeah, um, they wasn't giving any more asylum. They were deporting them all. 